What is going on you guys? I hope you're all having an embraceful day. You guys know what's better than running no front bumper? Actually having a front bumper. And that's what we got today, boys. We finally got a new front bumper. From bumper just as a temporary fix as many of you guys know if you've been watching the channel Kodak ended up ripping through my wiring harness messing up or eating through the driver the 80 and the 110 so what I thought I would do is buy a front bumper even though I know you guys are saying just run the front bumper that you already have but I mean I don't want to damage that front bumper already since I am a pretty low um, I'd rather just buy a new front bumper which is what I did this only costed about 55 bucks, so it was a pretty cheap buy. I bought it here locally at a shop where they order parts. It's like a very cheap place where you buy from bumpers, headlights, whatever you want to buy, they, they sell them for cheap. So this was 55 bucks, which I'm not really going to care too much about. Even if I destroy it, I'll just hit bumps and whatever. I don't really care about this front bumper. Like I mentioned, it's just temporary, so Kodak doesn't rip through my wiring again. Because, I mean, as much as I like the front, no, the no front bumper look, I'd rather keep my wiring protected from this little punk huh you know what you did you know what you did boy so the first thing we have to do in order to get this bumper to fit is of course put it on the car and since i am running quick latches i'm gonna have to take out the quick latches from the other bumper and transfer them onto here um and that should be the only thing i need to do in order to get the front bumper to fit i do have to get the license plate put onto that front bumper as well onto this bumper, I'm gonna get some grease and put it on the quick latch, on the stud, put it on the stud, put the bumper back on, push it tight so it transfers onto the bumper, the grease, and we'll pull it back off, and voila, the grease mark is right there, so that's where we're gonna be drilling the hole for the quick latch, if you guys didn't understand what I meant, on this rod right here, I just put the grease, the grease, you push it, the bumper onto the rod and the grease transfers onto the bumper so get that cleaned off and let's get our holes drilled So I got the hole drilled out and this one was a little bit harder to drill out than when I was drilling on my other front bumper. I'm guessing because this is lesser of a quality kind of stuff. So as you guys can tell, I mean it's all ripped up. I don't even know. Think I don't even think the hole's perfect. Let's see if it's gonna fit. No, it fits. I mean, it gets the job done. Let's see this side. This side came out a little bit nicer, but like I mentioned, this material isn't really that great. This bumper will do for whatever I wanted to do anyway, so. It's, it's, it's good enough. So the quick latches have both been tying down. They're ready. This bumper is ready to get put back onto the car. Um, something I do want to mention, this is going to be getting trimmed off, trimmed off to the to the wheel and to the fender. I also want to trim these off right now. Might as well, since it's off the car, I'm going to trim these little, these little like bumper, bumper holders. This mounts to like the chassis, so it keeps the bumper from like flexing and stuff like that. I don't use it for my other bumper. I don't need it for this bumper either. So we're going to get those cut off. <laughs> Something else that I figured that I should do before I put this bumper on, I have this leftover lip. It's from an 07 STI WRX, either or. Um, I was planning on selling it, but I mean, might as well, why not? Let's put it onto the bumper. Let's get at least the front end looking semi-decent. So I'm gonna put this lip onto this front bumper so you guys know, if you guys ever wanna do this, this is an 07 
to, I think it's 0708 Hawkeye STI WRX lip. I'm gonna make it fit onto the front bumper. Um, originally, I was gonna be using this lip onto my first front bumper that I was gonna be using, but I ended up going with the NIA Scion TC, the Scion TC2, fitting it onto that bumper. So I have this one left over. Like I mentioned, I wasn't gonna sell it, but might as well, let's put it onto the bumper. I got the sides mounted up on both sides just the middle is giving me a little bit of problems because I shouldn't I forgot I shouldn't have cut these tabs right here because the tabs right here are gonna be used to hold on the lip to here the only tab that I'm gonna be able to use now is this one right here because I didn't cut this one off but these other two end ones I should have kept them because it was gonna hold these two sides up now I'll probably have to drill like some type of tab onto here I don't know, we'll figure it out, but let me get this drill, this middle one drilled out, and maybe we'll do some zip ties or something like that. You won't be able to notice them anyways, but I'll show you guys the end product once it's done. So the lip is fully mounted all the way around. The only gaps that there are is right here. You won't be able to tell when the bumper's on the floor, but on both sides right here, since the bumper does like dip over, there's small little gaps there, but overall, it fits pretty good. Um, I put more screws than I needed just in case because I don't want the bumper falling off right, I'm gonna be cutting these tabs right here from the lip just in case if I'm backing up I don't want these to catch onto the floor and then the whole bumper just boom slip just like completely rips off so I, Like I mentioned, I just put more screws that I needed. You don't need that many screws if you're gonna be using this uh, uh, What you want call it this STI WRX Hawkeye lip? Um, what I would do differently is I wouldn't cut the tabs from back here from the bumper that way I could attach it easier but this way, I had to attach it straight to the bumper, push this up. So when it's on the floor, it'll look straight and then it'll dip up. But I mean, it's not going to look really that bad. I'll show you guys once we put it on the floor. So I'm going to cut this off. We're going to put it onto the car and I'll show you guys the end product. Dude, this thing looks so good with the lip and everything. Look at that. Look how perfect the lip came out. Look at that. This is kind of like what I mentioned. Right here, it's out. Then it goes like in. And then it comes back down and out. So it doesn't really look that bad. It looks pretty good, actually. Um, and it actually clears some space right here from, from it hitting the floor. So we won't be scraping here. I'm pretty sure we'll be scraping right here on the sides. And then since I didn't have the cap that goes right here for the tow hook, I ended up just putting the license plate right there so it covers that hole. So you guys can tell it looks really good. Right here, we got it all trimmed off to the wheel and we got the lip trimmed off to the bumper. So everything's holding on pretty good. I mean, it's pretty sturdy. It's not going anywhere. I think even the lip made it a little bit sturdier, made the bumper a lot sturdier because the bumper was kind of like flimsy and whatnot. So the lip is kind of helping with that. Right here up top, I just have it held by zip ties. I'm not really worried about it too much up here. Um, I usually have it holding on by zip ties. Maybe when I finish the build with the front bumper on, I'll put like some type of fancy hardware and stuff like that. But for now, that's how it's gonna sit. I mean, goddamn. Let me turn on the halo. It's gonna look, it looks so good. Damn, I kind of miss having a front bumper. Look at that. 
So since I finished up pretty much everything I wanted to do with my car, um, I do want to start doing some more carbon fiber stuff onto my center console. I'm trying to get it finished up since I am working on it in another video. I want to kind of want to focus my attention onto that since it does take a while to get the resin to dry and then put the fabric and stuff like that. I kind of want to just do this one last thing and then just focus my attention on that and the video on this note um i do need to change the oil onto my sister's car so that's what i'm going to be doing right now i'm going to do a time lapse of me doing the oil change as fast as i can to see if any of you guys can beat that time so let me get my timer ready and well, i'm gonna start the timer i'll show you guys what time i start and what time i finish and see if you guys can beat that time on a tc so i guess this could be the fastest oil change on a science tc and see who can beat it whoever beats it whatever time I get if you guys do a time-lapse of it as well send it to me I'll put my email in the description down below or you guys can send it to me through my Instagram I'll post it either on my Instagram or I'll post it on one of the on one of the videos on the YouTube channel the only rules to it is the car has to be on the floor um, and you can have all the tools ready by your side so everything that you need in order to do the oil change you can have it all ready um, in order to have it complete I would say the oil has to be on of course and the filter and the car has to be turned on and ready to go. So the time that I'm going to start at is 13.03 which is 103. I'm going to say 104 because I mean by the time I start the time lapse um, it's going to be 104. So 104, let's get started with the time lapse and let's begin. So I just finished right now. It is 13.31. So what's that? From 104 to 121, it's like a 17. Yeah, like a 17, I believe. 17 minutes to do a Scion TC oil change. I already checked the dipstick. Um, oil levels are good. I already have everything memorized on how much oil it needs. There's usually like half of a quart left when you're changing the science to see i probably should have not told you guys because now you guys are going to know you guys are going to um copy that you guys it's going to make you guys do it a lot quicker um what else there's no leaks no leaks underneath whatsoever i don't know if you guys are able to, i don't think you guys are able to tell but everything looks good damn 17 minutes to do a tc oil change if there's any of you guys out there that can actually beat that, make sure you guys make it into a time lapse. Send it to me, either email or through my DMs on Instagram. So send them in. I'm, I'm pretty tired. I'm pretty exhausted. Kind of winded. But uh, yeah, 17 minutes. So I know I'm probably going to get in the comment section down below. Oh, why do you put um, 4.3, almost to 4.5 oil onto the TC, the 2AZFE uh, engine block? Um, I know there's a lot of controversy on how much you should put and what. I think the manual says like 3.7 or something like that. But the TC 2AZFE motor, typically a lot of TCs burn a lot of oil. Or this, this engine, some people, some people do, some people don't. Um, they burn a lot of oil from this motor. So I usually technically feel like it should have a little bit more just in case because I usually change mine at 3,000 miles. Uh, my sister usually changes like four to 5,000 miles. And watch, let me show you guys how much is actually in. Watch, and it's perfectly above it slightly if it's gonna focus. Focus on my finger then. Come on. Are you not gonna wanna focus? Are you really not gonna wanna focus? Okay, it doesn't wanna focus, but it's right here. It's slightly, okay, right there, you can see my finger. It's slightly above the full level. And that that's basically where I like to put it. Um, I know there's some people, there's the forums that say, oh, you should put it a little bit below that. I don't like to do that because a TC, like I said, it's known for burning oil. So just in case if those of you that are trying to copy me and trying to put, uh, trying to like estimate between 4.2, 4.3, and 4.5 oil they should be putting into your transmission. I mean, put whatever you want. That's what I put. Um, so I don't have to be measuring since I am sometimes on a slope when I'm putting the oil. Right now I'm on a flat ground and it's pretty much a little bit higher than what it's supposed to be, which is what I like. So 
I mean, there's probably a lot of controversy that's going to happen in the comment section down below, but that's what I do. And that's how I'm going to keep on doing it, and you guys can do it however you guys want to do it. So with that being said and that being covered, that's where I'm going to end today's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We did get the front bumper, the cheap front bumper, onto my car with a lip just to give it a, a little flare, you know. So we got that done, and I got my sister's uh, oil change in under in 17 minutes. I was going to say in under 17 minutes, but it's exactly 17 minutes. So I'm really proud of that. Make sure if you guys try and beat that, make sure you guys send me the time lapse. Either I'm going to put an email in the description down below in this video, or you guys can send it through my DMs. Uh, so I'll try and beat the 17-minute mark, and that's it. That's what I'm in today's video, guys. Hope you guys enjoy today's video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, and embrace yourself. We love you. I